12 Rules for Life by Dr. Jordan Peterson Rule number 10. Be precise in your speech. Why is my laptop obsolete? What do you see when you look at a computer? At your own laptop, more precisely. You see a flat, thin, gray and black box. Less evidently, you see something to type on and look at. Nonetheless, even with the second perceptions included, what you are seeing is hardly the computer at all. That gray and black box happens to be a computer right now, right here and now, and maybe even an expensive computer. Nevertheless, it will soon be something so unlike a computer that it will be difficult even to give away. We will all discard our laptops within the next five years, even though they may still work perfectly, even though the screens, keyboards, mice, and internet connections may still flawlessly perform their tasks. Fifty years from now, early 21st century laptops will be oddities, like the brass scientific tools of the late 19th century. The latter now appear more like the arcane accoutrements of alchemy, designed to measure phenomena whose existence we no longer even recognize. How can high-tech machines, each possessing more computing power than the entire Apollo space program, lose their value in such a short period of time? How can they transform so quickly from exciting, useful, and status-enhancing machines to complex pieces of junk? It's because of the nature of our perceptions themselves and the often visible interaction between those perceptions and the underlying complexity of the world. Your laptop is a note in a symphony currently being played by an orchestra of incalculable size. It's a very small part of a much greater whole. Most of its capacity resides beyond its hard shell. It maintains its function only because a vast array of other technologies are currently and harmoniously at play. It is fed, for example, by a power grid whose function is invisibly dependent on the stability of a myriad of complex, physical, biological, economic, and interpersonal systems. The factories that make its parts are still in operation. The operating system that enables its function is based on those parts and not on others yet to be created. Its video hardware runs the technology expected by the creative people who post their content on the web. Your laptop is in communication with a certain specified ecosystem of other devices and web servers. And finally, all this is made possible by an even less visible element. The social contract of trust, the interconnected and fundamentally honest political and economic systems that make the reliable electrical grid a reality. This interdependency of part on whole, invisible in systems that work, becomes starkly evident in systems that don't. The higher order surrounding systems that enable personal computing hardly exist at all in corrupt third world countries, so that the power lines, electrical switches, outlets, and all the other entities so hopefully and concretely indicative of such a grid are absent or compromised, and in fact make little contribution to the practical delivery of electricity to people's homes and factories. This makes perceiving the electronic and other devices that electricity theoretically enables as separate functional units frustrating, at minimum, and impossible at worst. This is partly because of technical insufficiency. The systems simply don't work. But it is also in no small part because of the lack of trust characteristic of systemically corrupt societies. To put it another way, what you perceive as your computer is like a single leaf on a tree in a forest. Or more accurately, like your fingers rubbing briefly across that leaf. A single leaf can be plucked from a branch. It can be perceived briefly as a single self-contained entity. But that perception misleads more than clarifies. In a few weeks, the leaf will crumble and dissolve. It would not have been there at all without the tree. It cannot continue to exist in the absence of a tree. This is the position of our laptops in relation to the world. So much of what they are resides outside their boundaries that the screen devices we hold on our laps can only maintain their computer-like facade for a few short years. Almost everything we see and hold is like that, although often not so evidently.